Next book is called Unspeakable, The Tulsa Race Massacre, written by Carol Boston Weatherford, illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Once upon a time near Tulsa, Oklahoma, prospectors struck it rich in the oil fields. The wealth created jobs, raised buildings, and attracted newcomers from far and wide, seeking fortune and a fresh start. Once upon a time in Tulsa, there was a community called Greenwood. The residents descended from black Indians, from formerly enslaved people, and from exodusters who moved west in the late 1800s fleeing the violence and racism of the segregated South. Once upon a time in Greenwood, there were some 10,000 people living in a 35 square block area train tracks divided the black and the white communities. Segregation laws called for separate neighborhoods, schools, phone booths, and railroad and streetcar coaches. Unfair tests made it hard for blacks to register to vote, and laws barred marriages across racial lines. So many black businesses cropped up along one mile stretch of Greenwood Avenue that educator and business leader Booker T. Washington called the area the Negro Wall Street of America. The name later became Black Wall Street and the community kept thriving. Once upon a time on Black Wall Street, there were dozens of restaurants and grocery stores. There were furriers, a pool hall, a bus system, and an auto shop, nearly 200 businesses in all. There were also several libraries, a hospital, a post office, and a separate school system where some say black children got a better education than whites. There were two black owned newspapers, the Tulsa Star and Oklahoma Sun, and over 20 churches and 15 black doctors, including Dr. A.C. Jackson, the most able black surgeon in the nation. On Detroit Avenue stood grand homes of doctors, lawyers, and prominent businessmen. Once upon a time in Greenwood, there were barbershops and beauty salons. Ms. Mabel's Little Rose Beauty Salon boomed on Thursdays when maids who worked for white families got coiffed on their day off and strutted in style up and down Greenwood Avenue. The soda fountain at Williamson's Confectionery was the backdrop for scores of marriage proposals. And there was the luxurious Stratford Hotel, then the largest black hotel in the nation. Black guests were welcomed there even as they were barred from Tulsa's white hotels. Once upon a time in Greenwood, there were two movie theaters, including the 800 seat black owned dreamland there were even six privately owned airplanes but in 1921 not everyone in tulsa was pleased with these signs of black wealth undeniable proof of african americans could achieve just as much if not more than whites all it took was one elevator ride one 17 year old white elevator operator accusing a 19-year-old black shoeshine man of assault for simmering hatred to boil over. With the accused man in jail, the white-owned Tulsa Tribune newspaper ran a headline prompting readers to nab him. Fearing the man would be lynched, killed by a mob before his trial, 30 armed black men rushed downtown to his rescue. At the jail, they faced off with 2,000 armed whites. On May 31, 1921, one day after Memorial Day, a holiday honoring fallen soldiers, skirmishes between the two groups left two black men and 10 white men dead. But the worst was yet to come. Unable to get to the jailed suspect, the white mob sparked rumors that the black community planned to attack. Unchecked and in some cases deputized by the police, the white mob stormed into Greenwood, looting and burning homes and businesses 
that blacks had saved and sacrificed to build. Threatening to shoot, the mob blocked firefighters from putting out the blazes. African-American World War I veterans took up arms to defend their families and property, but they were outnumbered and outgunned. Families fled with only what they had, what they could carry. Once upon a time in Greenwood, up to 300 black people, including Dr. Jackson, were killed. Hundreds more were injured. More than 8,000 people were left homeless and hundreds of businesses and other establishments were reduced to ash. The police did nothing to protect the black community. When the National Guard arrived the next day, all that was left to do was to put out fires and move thousands of black residents into camps outside of Tulsa. As their community lay in ruins, black residents had to carry passes to enter the city. In the days and weeks that followed, some black Tulsans left and never returned. Others stayed and rebuilt the Greenwood community only to witness its decline in the 1960s. For decades, survivors did not speak of the terror. 75 years passed before lawmakers launched an investigation to uncover the painful truth about the worst racial attack in United States history. Police and city officials had plotted with the white mob to destroy the nation's wealthiest black community. Today, Tulsa Rec Reconciliation Park members remembers victims of the 1921 massacre and recalls the role of African Americans in Oklahoma history. But the park is not just a bronze monument to the past. It is a place to realize the responsibility we all have to reject hatred and violence and instead choose hope. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story, boys and girls. Thank you for listening. 